Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Will Bolsowitz. I am the U.S. Medical Director of ZOE, and I'm also a gastroenterologist. And I am here today to bring you the second update on the UK's biggest ever survey on bowel habits and gut health, the Big Poo Review. Today, I'll be sharing with you some of the latest insights that we're extracting from the data that you provided to us, including how long are people spending on the loo? And where in the UK are people lingering a bit longer than they should on the toilet? We're going to examine what percentage of y'all have constipation or diarrhea, and it's more than you would expect. Then finally, we're going to end with some practical tips on what you can do to help to address these issues and keep your bowels nice and healthy and regular. First up, let's take a look at how long people are sitting on the loo. I know you're dying to know. <laughs> so on average, people sit on the toilet for around 3.9 minutes. So just under four minutes. Now, one of the things that we discovered that was kind of interesting is that there's a difference in terms of gender. So males tend to spend about 5.3 minutes on the toilet on average. Whereas females report spending about 3.5 or three and a half minutes on the toilet. This is a pretty substantial difference if you think about it. Men are spending about 50% more time than women are. Now, why is this? Is it that men are savoring the moment? Are they checking sports scores on their phone? Um, from my perspective, there's not really a physiologic reason for this. There's not an anatomical reason for this. So most likely there's some sort of social aspect for why men are spending more time on their toilet. One of the other things that's interesting is that there was an age distribution. As we get older, we spend more time on the commode. And this is very clear. It is consistent. Each age group is sequentially less and less time on the toilet. So if we look at 18 to 32 year olds, we find that they spend on average 5.4 minutes to have a bowel movement. Now, bear in mind, the average person is reporting 3.9 minutes. So when I say 5.4 minutes for people that are 18 to 32, that basically means that they're spending an extra minute and a half compared to everyone else in the study. So that's a substantial difference. When you get up to age 58 and older, we find that this number drops down all the way to 3.6. So it's about 60% of the time that younger people are spending on the toilet. Once again, what is the explanation for this? I don't think that there's actually like a true age related issue here. I think it's more likely that this is socially related. So are younger people more likely to carry their phone into the bathroom uh, to you know be checking their social media while they're on the toilet? Um, those are the questions that I have, uh, but nonetheless, uh, I'd be curious to hear what you think about this. Now, when we look at extremes, like who is spending the least time possible having a bowel movement? Nearly 5% of people are spending 30 seconds or less to have a bowel movement. That is way more than I would have expected. So about one in 20 people, they poop in less than 30 seconds. Whew. Um, I'm not sure that there's an advantage to that, but nonetheless, that's what it is. And about six and a half percent of people spend more than 10 minutes on the toilet. Now, spending extra time on the toilet, I just want you to know, I don't recommend it. Uh, typically, we want our bowel movements to take about five minutes or less, get your business done, and you want to move on with your day. The reason that you don't want to spend too much time on the toilet, it's not just about straining it's also that when you are in a squatted position to have a bowel movement, you actually are going to draw blood into the tissues that surround um, your bottom. And this is how you can exacerbate hemorrhoids. And so as we age, hemorrhoids become increasingly problematic. About 50% of people have hemorrhoidal issues at age 50. So for the 6.5% of people who are spending more than 10 minutes on average to have a bowel movement, if possible, we want to get our business done and move on with our day. When we look at the distribution across the United Kingdom, uh, what we will see here is that in this map, the dark blue color is the people who are using the or spending the most time 
to have a bowel movement. And the lighter blue color are the people that are spending the least time to have a bowel movement. So uh, perhaps you see it, but just in case, the geographic regions that are spending the most time on the loo are Westminster and Sunderland and Hull. And as for the ones that are spending the least time on the loo, those are East Lothian, South Lakeland, and Hackney. Next up, let's talk about constipation. For the purposes of this analysis, we defined constipation as either pooing less than three times per week or having the majority of your bowel movements be either type 1 or type 2 on the Bristol stool chart. Now, type 1 and type 2 are classic constipation uh, shapes in terms of the Bristol stool chart. In total, among more than 142,000 people who participated in the Big Poo Review, we had 30,013 people report that they are constipated according to these criteria. That is 21% of the people in the study. Now, one of the things that we discovered is that there was a staggering difference between men and women in terms of the rates of constipation that were reported. Men reported constipation in about 13%. Women reported constipation in 23.3%. Why is this? Well, first of all, let me say, it has been very well documented in the past that women are more prone to constipation than men. There are a number of reasons why this may be. We're not completely clear or totally sure why this is. But number one, it does seem that women have longer bowel transit than men do. Number two, we think that uh, female sex hormones do play a role in this. So as an example, progesterone is known to slow bowel motility substantially. This explains why constipation is more common in women during pregnancy as well. Those um, female sex hormones uh, are what slow bowel motility uh, in that setting. And that also is what causes acid reflux in that setting, by the way. And uh, finally, we also know that constipation becomes more common after menopause. So nonetheless, these numbers that we see in the Big Poo Review, 23% of women and 13% of men, these are about where we expected them to be. And so it's uh, surprising what percentage of people suffer from constipation, isn't it? Now, if we were to look in terms of a geographic distribution across the UK, what we find is that people who live in Shepway, Rugby, and Baber have the highest rates of constipation in the entire country. Uh, each of these places, Shepway, Rugby, and Baber, are reporting more than 27% of people have constipation. On the flip side, constipation doesn't seem to be so much of an issue in Scottish borders or West Lothian or Reading. I wonder what the difference between these places is. It'd be, I'd be very curious to dig into fiber intake and hydration and how much exercise, how much they are walking. When we looked at symptoms that are correlated with constipation, we find that straining during the uh, process of pooing is the most correlated symptom to having constipation. So people who strain are the most likely to report either having Bristol one and two bowel movements or pooing less than three times per week. And in terms of the physiologic symptom that is most strongly associated with constipation, it is excessive bloating. And this, to me, when I saw this result, I was really encouraged because this is exactly what I've seen in my personal experience as a gastroenterologist. People who have constipation suffer with gas and bloating. The most common symptom of constipation is gas and bloating. And when you get their bowels regular, the gas and bloating improves. And to me, that's the way in which I typically would measure uh, my treatment for constipation is I want to see the gas and bloating improve. That's when you really know that you're making a difference. Now we're going to talk about diarrhea. For the purposes of this study, we defined diarrhea by having more than three bowel movements per day or having Bristol 
Uh, stool form type six or seven bowel movements being the most common dominant type of bowel movement that a person has. So using these criteria, we discovered that among the 142,000 people who participated in the Big Poo Review, we had 21,897 people qualify for having chronic diarrhea. So that is 15.3% of the people participating in the Big Poo Review. When we looked at the gender, the gender differences when it comes to diarrhea were not as striking as they are with constipation. Men had a slightly higher rate of diarrhea than women. So among men, the rate of diarrhea was 17.5%, and among women, the rate of diarrhea was 14.7%. Now, there are some studies that um, uh, have supported the idea that men are more likely to develop IBS with diarrhea. So in a way, this does make sense. And... We were just talking about how female sex hormones pump the brakes on bowel motility or that after menopause, women's bowel motility slows down. So it would make sense that if women are more prone to constipation, then they would be less prone to diarrhea. Just makes sense. And that's what we see, but they're actually rather close. Again, 17.5% for men and 14.7% for women. Now you're wondering... In terms of looking at the entire UK um, and who is most likely to have diarrhea, what you're going to see here is that the yellow colors are for those who are least likely to have diarrhea, and the red colors are for those who are most likely to have diarrhea. Diarrhea is most common in Carmarthenshire, Northwest Leicestershire, and Gedwing. Each of these three locations are reporting more than 20%, more than one in five people are suffering with chronic diarrhea. Flip side, the areas in the UK that are least likely to have diarrhea are Hertzmere, Malvern Hills, and Hammersmith and Fulham. So that's interesting. Uh, I'm not sure about why that might be, but um, I'd be very curious into why uh, these specific locations seem to show such a dramatic difference where we're talking about, you know, if you are in Carmarthenshire, you have twice the rate of diarrhea compared to Hertzmere. Now, the symptoms related to diarrhea. Uh, people who are suffering with this, they report that they are most likely to have abdominal pain and excessive flatulence. I don't think that really comes as a big surprise to me as a gastroenterologist. The vast majority of people who have chronic diarrhea, they also have abdominal pain, and it's typically in the setting of irritable bowel syndrome with diarrhea. Additionally, when they go to poo, people with chronic diarrhea report urgency. Once again, this is not a surprise. I would expect that when you are having chronic diarrhea, because your body is not designed to stop the liquid stuff from coming out, you are more likely to have urgency and feel the need to rush to the restroom. All right, let's talk about some general tips of what you can do if you suffer with constipation or diarrhea. Now, in both cases, one of the things that's cool is that fiber is helpful. Fiber is the only thing that exists that is beneficial to both constipation and diarrhea. When it's constipation, it helps to move it through. When it's diarrhea, it helps to form up the stool. So what you want is you want to increase your fiber intake. And when you do this, you simultaneously want to increase your hydration, increase the amount of fluids that you're consuming. If you have constipation, there are certain foods that may be beneficial. Um, specifically, prunes and green kiwis have been shown to actually help to mobilize stool. Um, you may also find that magnesium supplements can help in terms of having more regular bowel movements. When it comes to diarrhea, the question that comes up is why are you having this diarrhea? And ultimately, that's what you need to answer. But a couple of things that can make IBS with diarrhea worse are fried foods, fatty foods, dairy products, gluten-containing foods or wheat-based foods, um, chocolate, carbonated drinks, and caffeine. So, if you have IBS with diarrhea, I would try moderating your intake of those specific things. 
and see if it helps. So pulling this all together, we found that on average, most of you are on the loo for just under four minutes. However, 6.5% of you are spending more than 10 minutes on average. Adding up to just over two and a half days a year sitting on the toilet. Now this could be due to constipation, which is affecting more than a fifth of you. Or it could be that you're playing on your phone or reading a book or just taking some time to yourself. Nonetheless, as I, as I mentioned earlier, um, I wouldn't recommend that you spend too much time on the toilet as this can draw blood into uh, the tissues that surround your bottom and ultimately lead to the development of hemorrhoids. On the flip side, uh, just over 15% of you report having diarrhea with men seeing this slightly more frequently than women. So thank you for uh, being a part of the Big Poo Review. And we have even more insights to share with you. So look out because there will be additional videos to come. Um, please make a comment below with what you found most interesting about the results so far. And remember to like and subscribe to our channel. That way you can be informed of, of new videos when they become available. Please share the app with your friends and your family to tell them about the new features that we have. And keep an eye on the website and the app for updates. Thank you for your supporting science and keep on logging. Thanks, everyone.